Hold on. So I'm just doing like little recordings because I'm gonna like TikTok the process of this. <laughs> I'm I'm not using okay. I'm learning how to use TikTok because because apparently almost everyone, including journalists, has a TikTok account. So I'm like, why? Oh my god. So will I have to eventually if I get in the journalist field? Well, just saying the Guardian is using it. Oh my god. So yeah, if I were you start learning how to use TikTok. <laughs> Yeah, now I have to admit to my friends saying, like, yeah, I finally succumbed to TikTok. And they're like, yes! My name is Ariel, and you're listening to Never Have I Ever, a podcast about experiences I never had. Welcome to episode 2 of this podcast series. So if you're just joining us, feel free to subscribe as new episodes come out each week. Today, I'm here to tell you that Never Have I Ever was part of an online community. So growing up, I was never really part of an online community or an online group. Oh no, whenever I was into something when I was young, I tend to talk about it with my friends or siblings and I had no problem with that. I mean, it's much safer that way, right? Like you're talking with people you know and you trust them, not just some random stranger that you haven't met yet. But just a few years ago, I learned that one of my childhood games had a huge online community for a really long time and it's been going on since like the early years since the game's launch that apparently almost everyone knows each other even till this day and that game and that community will be the case study of today's episode so i joined the club penguin community back in 2018 but i left it mid 2020 and though i try to stick around Sometimes I feel like I'm the odd one out since I played solo or with people I know. Meanwhile, all these people just hung out with each other, not only in game but in also social media. So eventually, these guys grew up with each other. And it would make sense that they would all know each other not only by their username but sometimes through their first name basis as well. I try to catch up and try to understand what I've missed and try to get as much of the inside jokes that they had but it is hard considering that I wasn't there and so much has changed with the community that it's like you're missing out and even if you try to join in now you feel like you're missing a bunch of other information that can only be explained if you were there when it happened. Luckily, I know some people who can help me catch me up to speed and I will let that person introduce themselves. And this person will be the guest of today's episode. So take it away! Hello everyone, my name is Athena Serrano and in my childhood and teen years, I was mostly known as CW700 on Club Penguin and in the Club Penguin community. During my early years in the community, I was a Club Penguin fan made music video creator on YouTube, but I eventually moved my interest in drawing Penguin fan art and later making commissions for the community, which by the way, I still do sometimes. Now, currently, I'm in my final year of university studying communication and media and graphic arts, and I'm an active illustrator artist on social media and a student journalist. So joining me is my friend Athena, a Club Penguin community member from America. So, hey, how's it like over there on the other side of the globe? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, it's been doing okay. Well, I mean, the vaccine roll has been going off decently here. But it seems like things are starting to get better and there's a light in the end of the tunnel. But overall, I'm pretty good so far. Let's go back from the very beginning. So... When did you start playing Club Penguin? So I started playing Club Penguin around April 2008. I still remember the exact date I signed up. It was April 22nd. I actually knew of Club Penguin already before that because I have like a relative who played it in like 2007. I used to go to her house and watch her play Club Penguin. I used to annoy the hell out of her. She's like saying, hey, can I play? And she's like, no. And I kind of just forgot about Club Penguin and all that. But then like one day I was sick at home from school and I was 
going on the Disney Games website, I remember seeing Club Penguin on there, and I was like, wait, this is the game that like my cousin played. So I went on the website, and as a as a kid, I would ask my dad, like, hey, can you sign me up? an account there with your work email and he's like sure and yeah I made my account which was or my original account was named Eng Eng which was, print, was spelled E-N-G-E E-N-G-E Wait you used your parents email to make a Club Penguin account? Of course I was like 8 years old I was, I was like 2 months before I turned 9 if, if, if I was like a teenager I'd be like ah screw it So how did you like find like people to be like friends with because uh, based on my observations literally everyone knew each other even when the game ended. Meanwhile, there's me who just only played with like classmates and siblings and relatives. So your experience will be really different to mine and probably a few others when it came to how we <laughs> play video games, especially MMORPGs. Yeah, I mean, like back in the day, like of course, like the first year I played Love Penguin, I just played with my classmates and my childhood friends. And of course, I would meet like online friends here and there. But it wasn't until like 2009 I really got into like the Club Penguin community overall. Now back then, like Twitter was kind of like very new. So this was, in 2009, like most of the Club Penguin community was on YouTube. And one day, like I was looking at Club Penguin videos, and I saw people there would make like you know. Late Night on Club Penguin, which was a very, it was at the time a very famous fan movie series, a fan made horror series of, you know, penguins diving, <laughs> being killed by a serial killer in, in game. And I used to see also like Club Penguin music videos that were made for fun. And, you know, I wanted to do something like that on my own. So that's when, that's when actually it introduced me to social media. Like I signed up a YouTube account, which at nine years old, between nine to ten years old, you technically you should not have a, an account. I mean, it you know you've seen a lot of kids nowadays on social media at a very young age, much younger than I was when I joined like social media. But when I started uh, my YouTube channel, I my channel was done for just for making clipping music videos, and that's when I met like several people in the clipping community overall. And at, it basically, it was kind of like a subgroup of the Clipping community because it's people who made music videos for fun. And it wasn't until like 2012-ish is when there was a Twitter Clipping community. Yeah, it's really quite interesting like how... Unlike other games, when it came to Club Penguin, we all formed a community through the game and through different subgroups and suddenly, eventually, everyone started knowing each other because we all grew up, we started using our real names, we, we felt comfortable and all that. So it's quite a surreal experience. Like, I remember when I decided to join the community, literally in like 2018, everyone started to know each other and some of them in like first name basis and I'm just like sitting there and be like, huh. So this is you. I didn't know there was a community at all. I'm just like, what have I been missing in all my life, you know? Yeah, because some people in the Clipping community have been around since, like, I would say between 2013 to 2015. Now, I actually left the Twitter community for a bit between 2015 to 2018, 2019-ish. Because, like, at the time I was growing out of Clipping when I was, you know, busy with high school and I just... You know, no longer was interested in Club Penguin at that point. But, yeah, there was some... I was kind of shocked, too. There were some people who I knew from back in the day were still in the community. But there was also some people, I suspect, in the community today who were part of the Club Penguin community before, like, years ago, but they just changed their usernames or go by a different alias. So who were the most notable people in the community back in the day? Oh, boy, I have to really think about this one. If you get the name one... <laughs> Not too much about it. <laughs> if you got to name one, who would it be? Like one notable person. And don't okay, say Train the staff. Man, Trainman1405. He runs the Club Penguin Memories website. And he's his website was known for Club Penguin cheats, like basically tips and, you know, tricks that, you know, you might not have found in the game or, you know, just to get like a good quick walkthrough through like a new event like or update in, in Club Penguin. So let's say the Puffle Party came out. I just want to go on real quick and just get all the items. So I just go on his website, get the information from his new post, and you know I find out where the new pin or the new free items are at. He's actually one of the, like the, around, I think around eight people I met from the community I met in real life. I might sound like an actual boomer, but I will just say, you guys had it so easy. You know what I had to do? Log in in a full <laughs> server, ask everyone where the new pin is at, and just vote for the best that people are going to help me out. And luckily, people did help me out. So I had to walk around and ask. Meanwhile, you kids had your 
your cheat sites and your Twitter <laughs> and your YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> wow. yeah, and yeah, yeah, before, yeah, before, like, around, like, Copenhagen, before Copenhagen and all these CPBSs, it's basically Club Penguin Cheats. That's how the easiest way to become, air quote, Club Penguin famous. Oh, my God, there was so many blogs back then. Like, sometimes there was competition. And usually there's, like, certain, like, petty drama here and there on, like, you know, based on, like, the person, like, whether they were, like, reliable or not to work on their blog. But honestly, overall, like, when it comes to Klopengwen blogs, like, it actually did help a lot of these people, like, you know, know how to do, like, web design and, you know, host their own website. Because I, one of, one of my friends from the community back then, he was known as Bird the Bird. I still keep in contact with him. He was a little bit known, too, in the community before. And he did manage to earn money from his blog and, you know, learn how to, like, do graphic design and web design through just having his own blog. Yeah, I've noticed, like, a bunch of these people who run Club Penguin blogs, they started, like, running their own independent businesses or they started working for pl- publishers. For example, like, we all know Tech50. He now published something recently in a national paper or something, according to his Twitter. Yeah. And then we got the guy Ninja Udark. He now has his own gaming company in his country. It's really interesting where Club Penguin could lead us. Where did Club Penguin take you? Oh, for me, well, like, when I first started out in the community, like, I did my music videos. It actually did some benefits for me. Like, you know, people have come to me, like, in school, like, in college, like, like, hey, can you do, like, these videos for, like, our virtual fine arts gallery? And I'm like, sure, because I have some experience in editing. And I, and also, Club Penguin made me the artist I am today. Like, to be honest, if it wasn't for that game, I would not have been, like, become an artist or studied graphic arts in my college right now. And let me just say your art is really cool. Like, I remember interviewing you for Australian radio, for the community radio last year because it was so good and it was so relatable. And it was my first um, uh, live, sh- well, not really live, it was pre-recorded, but still it was like live air quotes show because it was relatable for, at the time. You know, you did a comic about self-isolation and it's quite interesting, like how video games like connect the community like all over the world, like. You're like from America. I'm like in Australia. We're like in the diff- we're different time zones, you know? And then we're like, we have friends in like America and the UK takes to Club Penguin and all that. Yeah, I mean, like Club Penguin has actually been a good start for like, I would say kids and minors to like figure out like what they like to do in a way or like their interests. Because unlike most other fandoms where like you got people from all ages, like Club Penguin for like years was known to have mostly minors. So it was mostly like, you know, a little bit safer, I guess, than some other fandoms from just, you know, very disturbing or disgusting stuff. I'm not saying like, like the company community is immune to this because like I, as we have observed, like, like the last two years, there's because more people uh, who are older are coming in or people around our age are maturing to adults. They've gotten evolved into like really problematic stuff but back then like since most of us were young we were still able to relate and kind of were more like willing to be childish like in other fandoms they kept tend to like expose you to cer- certain things that you know kids are not supposed to see although to be fair like overall even when i was young like joining the playing community like i've been exposed to like certain things i'm not supposed to but i'm thankful it has not been as bad as some people like in other fandoms or even the kids today. Yeah, I agree. Like based off what I read and saw when I was part of the Lazy Town fandom, don't ask everyone. Mm-hmm. But, um, apparently back in the early days, the Lazy Town <laughs> fandom on like websites and forums used to be a Stephanie worship fest. Yes, they worship Stephanie. Don't, oh and they're like middle-aged men. Do not ask. I don't want to think about it too much. Ever since season three started, the Stephanie worship fest sort of ended and it ended up becoming uh they started lacking the show for the show and then eventually it became we are number one memes but yeah it's like really interesting like how club penguin despite it's like it's really interesting like the community is like we all started at the same point it was in the early ages of the internet where there is some parental control before things got you know haywire and all that and we were pretty much safe for the long run in my honest opinion like I was exposed to, like, the word sex at age, I don't know, 9, 10, 11. But that's as far as it went. 
what the word sex was because I thought sex meant gender, but it turns out it's other things. Oh boy. Although like still in the clothing me, like I actually was around the same age when I first learned what sex was because I remember like the earliest days of the Kofengman private servers, it was very shady. Like a lot of a lot of teenagers would like start like these private servers. Like the I think the earliest one was called iClub Penguin or ICP. And there was iClub Penguin version three with ICP V3. And I remember some of the moderators there were very vulgar. There was one point they told like this player like to type this website in their URL and it led to a porn website. Oh, so God. yeah. It's at the time like the older people back in the day in the Copenhagen Club community were just basically edgy teenagers. They weren't like adults like, you know, who could potentially be, you know, causing maybe like some that might fall under predatory like, you know, behavior. But there was teenagers there back in the day who were re- kind of pro- problematic on its own. But at the same time, like, I remember in the clubbing community, like, in the early days, I was, I was kind of used to originally being one of the, some of the youngest because uh, there were some others who were, like, bet- two to four years older than me. And they were, like, in middle school or high school. And I was still, like, in fifth grade and um, turning into sixth grade. And I would see, like, these preteens and teenagers swear and act like they're all cool and edgy and stuff. But... I mean, I feel like today, like in the, the current clubbing community, if they were like at that age right now, you know, the current community would just be like, oh, look at these kids, these kids, uh, they're going to like look down at them more. But before the older ones, like when they're teen years, they were like the cool kids. Yeah, I mean, you look up to the ones who are older than you because that's what that's how we were raised, you know, role models yeah. are the people who are older than you, regardless of what they think. I feel like also like, at the same time, like, these teenagers who were, like, edgy in, the, in between, like, 2009 to 2012, like, you know, they're, I think they became well-adjusted adults by now, so at least most of them, but still at the same time, I remember there was so, usually sometimes petty drama regarding, like, <laughs> virtual, like, relationships or online long-distance relationships back then. Man, even back in the day in the Clipping music video community, there was a lot of, like, relationships going on there. And it's, it's basically, like, middle school, like, high school drama crap. It's, like, honestly, I feel like most of them would make fun of their old self back in the day. But I remember seeing, like, in, like, YouTube comments and their YouTube channel description, like, to say, like, they, who their partner is. Yeah, I remember those relationships. I don't want to go back into it, but I will just say, looking back, I cringe. Same here. Like, I would cringe back in the day. Like, I don't really count, like, most of them, like, as real relationships because, I mean, at that point, you're just kind of, like, you're, you're just kind of just going along with it for the, air quote, fun of it. So, as you know, um, I joined the community. Then I made a public video on YouTube saying that I'm leaving. And one of the reasons for that, and it's not only me, there were, like, a few others who I will not name. <laughs> That they think that they've noticed that ever, especially since when Club Penguin ended in like 2018 when Club Penguin Island closed, the community started to get toxic. And it's not just me, some people back in early 2019 accused of the remaining Club Penguin community members at the time for favoritism and gatekeeping. So they're like saying, You're not a real Club Penguin member if you didn't play Club Penguin Island. Or you're not a real Club Penguin member if you didn't support the game after 2012. And I'm just like, what? What are your thoughts on stuff like that? I from the Club Penguin Island standpoint, like I kinda do understand that they want like more people to continue supporting like the actual staff of the Club Penguin not, not Club Penguin, the actual Club Penguin game, like still working for Disney and Club Penguin. At the same time though, like I mean for me I didn't start playing Club Penguin Island till like a year after like the game released. So like at the time I had like a b- more biased perspective, like, oh Club Penguin Island is not gonna be as great and Personally, obviously, I do think Clubbing and I have potential, but you know how Disney is. But at the same time, I feel like the gatekeeping is definitely a real thing. I feel like some people do get aggressive over this because, like, they are so attached to the game in a way that it's almost like part of their identity. And I, 
I do sympathize with that because, like, Go Penguin has mostly defined most of my late childhood and my early teenage years. And also, like, Go Penguin private servers are, do have, like, a very ambiguous, like, legality issue behind that. But at the same time, like, I just wouldn't, like, police everybody to, like, you know, like, oh, you should stop playing this or you should, like, just do this instead. Unless, you know, there's those other private servers that had, you know, very shady owners and administrators. That's a whole different story. Yeah, because um, around 2019, I interviewed Rocket Snail or Lance Brief, you know, one of the co-owners of Club Penguin. And one yeah. of the things we talked about is how when Box Critters became a thing, for those who are listening, Box Critters is uh, Lance Brief's newest game. He's trying to create a new Club Penguin using hamsters, basically. We talked about how there are, were some Club Penguin community members from the Club Penguin Island crew, mostly from that area, who were not really happy that Club Penguin players are willing to play box critters despite the fact that the game is still in beta and there's barely anything you can do at the time. It was just one room and you're just standing there and they start saying, but Club Penguin Island had this and that and this and that and you're willing to support this game? I've read a lot of posts online about people complaining and can't comprehend on why Box Critters has more attention to CPI. CPI has a lot of features during the beta and the initial it, initial launch, but lots of players hated it. But Box Critters is just one room and everyone goes crazy. I remember that one or one or two of them called the game Box Cutters. As yep. some sort of insult, I don't know. But what are your thoughts on Club Penguin fans, or basically in this case Club Penguin Island fans, calling your game Box Cutters because they have no idea how popular the game is? Good, cool. Bring it on. I hope they could one day join and uh, maybe we'll put some box cutters on those critters so that you can run around as a weapon in your RPG carrying a box cutter. <laughs> we'll just put it right in the game. If they don't want to play it, don't play it. Don't waste your time. Go watch Netflix. When I hear stuff like that, it just pretty much just, in my head at least, in my honest opinion, it pretty much justifies why people are saying they'd rather play box critters and move on from Club Penguin because of the gatekeeping and the toxicity and all that, you know? It's just like... And to the point where I saw a few people on Twitter who literally called the game box cutters as a like a point of insult, like they're trying to insult the game by calling it that. But then eventually they started liking the game because, I don't know, maybe they've grown fond of it or they want to support the alumni who are now working on it, like the alumni staff. But yeah, that's based off what I've noticed when I was still within the Club Penguin community before I left. Yeah, I think it's a combination of both factors, like, you know, supporting the alumni and, like, it, it grew on to them. Firstly, like, what I tried to get into box for this, but I was just like, I feel like it's just going to be too much, like, how Club Penguin originally is, because I think that's the main reason why it appealed to so many people who criticize Club Penguin Island, because box traders has a similar format to, like, how Club Penguin was before. But, like, at the same time, like, it's, it. I would say, like, it, for some people who are like, who are saying at first like criticizing box critters, I I'm not gonna call them hypocritical because like I think it's it's down to their issue to like resolve on their own like whether or not like they are hypocritical or not, but like at the same time like I think they they should like they should be aware be like aware and reflect on things they've said in the past. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, I know, you know, people change and people change opinions over time, but it does sting a bit knowing that these people who literally called Box Critters a terrible game and criticizing, you know, former Club Penguin players who were willing to support that one rather than Club Penguin Island, and then suddenly, you know, they start supporting the game like they've been there since the start. But you know what? That's my problem. I will resolve that on my own, but that's just my opinion. I'm happy that these guys are willing to give box critters a try and good on them. We're moving the community to a land of hamsters. And I would say, like, to be honest, I would say I feel like people should support more box critters more than just like private servers in general. My stance has kind of changed on like what on what on Club Penguin private servers and stuff like Club Penguin written. It's just, maybe it's just my bias because I've lost interest in Club Penguin written and other private service, it's, I guess you could say I'm growing out of it since, like, you know, I'm 21 years old. I'm more focused on my career. And I think, personally, like, I understand being so attached to a game that impacted much of your childhood, but I do think the game should have, should have died on its own already and rest in peace. While I do think Lopeng and private service will still be around at least for a short while, 
I don't think they're gonna last forever because, you know, nothing lasts forever. And the Club Penguin community is gonna just grow small over time because most of the current community is young adults in college or older teens in high school. And eventually they're gonna get so caught up in their personal life, like, you know, finding what they want to do in life and finding a career or applying for a job and other things that the Club Penguin community will no longer be their main priority. They won't also have time to log on to Club Penguin Written, especially by then anymore. I'm pretty sure like the current administrators and staff of Club Penguin Written are gonna move on from just working on there. They're gonna want to do other projects too. And you know, just working on for a game is takes a lot of time. And you know, there's gonna be a point that Club Penguin Written and other private servers will shut down eventually for that the Clopane community is going to eventually die on its own, slowly. It'll be kind of similar to how the My Little Pony fandom died down eventually. After the finale of My Little Pony aired and they had their fa- last BronyCon. By the way, I'm not a My Little Pony fan. I just learned about this from a video I watched a while ago on the last BronyCon on, and how the My Little Pony fandom just faded away into obscurity. I'm not saying there's no My Little Pony fans, but... You know, there's gonna be people in the Club Penguin community, like, there's still gonna be people who are still make fan art and bring up discussions, but the Club Penguin community will never be the same how it was when I was younger. It's kind of strange looking back because that was my clout days, basically. I feel like the Club Penguin community is just gonna fade into obscurity eventually. Like, honestly, it wasn't- it, most people haven't heard about the Club Penguin community, like, even before, like, even th- when it was as biggest in its peak. Like, you, what you said, like, you didn't join the clubbing community and didn't know what it was until, like, 2018. It was never as big as, like, My Little Pony, for example, or other fandoms. Like, I feel like the reason, the fact that it's niche and small, it's, yeah, like, the Club Penguin community will just fade over time and die. And Club Penguin has been shut down since 2017. And Club Penguin Island since 2018. My god, it's been, like, three to four years. So, overall, like... There will be people who will be leaving eventually. More people leaving. But I do want to thank Club Penguin overall for teaching me a lot. Like, Club Penguin also was there for me when I was a child, when I was lonely. And, you know, when I didn't feel like I fit in anywhere. I am an only child. I didn't really have many friends as a child. And I went to a small school. So Club Penguin was there for me. I basically made most of my closest and best friendships through the internet and through Club Penguin, and I still keep in contact with many of them to this day. Some of them I still talk to regularly, and they're no longer a part of the Club Penguin community, but like we don't even talk about Club Penguin really anymore. We just talk about other things. But I treasure their friendships, and I'm lucky to have met some of them in real life. At the same time too, like Club Penguin has made me the artist I am today. Like I mentioned earlier, like I, if it wasn't for this game, I wouldn't have discovered my passion. And I feel like this is the same for a lot of people in the community. Like, a lot of people wouldn't have, you know, become, like, writers or filmmakers or video editors because of this. So, overall, like, I am very, very great, very grateful to be, like, a part of the Club Penguin community and for playing Club Penguin for most of my childhood and even, like, most of my teen years. I'd like to thank Athena for not only being our guest, but also giving out that wonderful conclusion. Yes, Club Penguin and online communities will have that inevitable fate to go into obscurity, but it's the memories that we keep that makes those moments meaningful. I may not have joined the Club Penguin community specially, but there were other groups that I may have come across that did provide me with new friendships and wonderful experiences. Not all fandoms and communities are toxic. Some of them may have brought joy to others and probably to you as well. My name is Ariel and this has been another episode of Never Have I Ever. There are more topics and other missed out experience to cover. So until then, I hope you stick around for the next one. While waiting, feel free to listen to an earlier episode of Never Have I Ever or my other podcast Casual Nerds with my friend Matt over on YouTube, Spotify, and other podcasting platforms. Until then, thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.